Hi, I'm Odd Jobs, and this is my new series, To Lay to Place. This series started, as most of my series do, with extensive city walking. The more marginal areas of cities have this mass gathering of textures, shapes, and forms into an intense and poetic layering. It's like a living archive. And I spend a lot of time photographing these surfaces and this builds into my own archive of sorts, something that I can draw from as I construct the layers of my work. The next step for this series was gathering my own marks and lines and I spent a lot of time in sketchbooks trying to find line work that would hum and zap together and something that was on the boundary between being text and not text. I knew I wanted to push my exploration of spatial mass further in this new series, so I started creating these sprawling clouds of acrylic, watercolour, graphite and oil pastel, layering, overpainting, scrubbing out and literally sanding back the work to obtain these subtle shifts in tone and colour. I was pleased with the outcomes, but something seemed to be missing. A, central contrasting element that would allow these clouded forms to have more presence. This took me back to something I'm often drawn to in my street photography, which are these small stickers on the edge of shop shutters. These are often layered and layered one over another, and as shops change hands and the shutters and walls are repainted or graffitied, you're left with these little ghosts of rectangular forms their texts and part of their meaning is lost or weathered away and they become these little intimate figures in the collage of the street. It was at this time I came across these small postcard paintings that my four-year-old son had made and I added one on top of the mass of painted textures and gestures I'd been making previously. This instantly linked back to those shutter stickers and began to complete the task of being that central figure in the drama. It cut across the mass and added sharp lines and sculptural presence. There was now a layering which hadn't been there before. The cloud became the ground or the stage holding up or pulling on the postcard block that became the figure, this new actor in the drama. After many hours of layering, sanding and overpainting, it was from here that I started scanning these experiments and using fragments from them as starting points for digital pieces. From there, it's a combination of extracting textures from my street photography and long processes of digitally layering and erasing, warping type, layering digital mark making and composing all these disparate fragments of shape and texture together until there is this active and poetic conversation between all the elements of a piece. The work emerges really as more of a collage or a sculptural format with the composing of these fragments more than as a painting process. So from this, six pieces emerged to create the To Lay To Place series. Let's look at them a bit more in detail. Piece number one was not the first piece to be made, but it's the piece I wanted to lead the series with. And I did want there to feel like there was a story or an evolving journey as you go from piece one, two, three, and so on. The deep green colour I used for the clouded mass spoke to me of history and weight, but I used the hot peaches, reds and yellows to pop alongside that to disturb and disrupt something of that weight and stability. While your eye is initially drawn to that lower, weightier section, there are these lighter marks and this bright yellow curved shape in the top left. This is actually a broken letter form from a series of letter set that I was manipulating. That again for me spoke to this sense of language and meaning being erased and eroded. Piece number two in the series 
is probably one of the most visually active and highly layered pieces of the series. It was made with maybe 20, 30 layers of street photographs, of painted textures, of drawn forms, built up into this huge mass. This was also the first piece in the series in which I used a digital technique called displacement mapping in the warping of the typography. Displacement mapping is where you can get one image to behave like another, you can link them together. And in this case, the warped typographical forms are linked to an image of a dirt and grime covered wall. In this piece, I also kept in some accidentally scanned elements of masking tape from one of the original painting experiments, which I then recolored and degraded. I then matched that with digitally painted shapes and these forms were all slightly resized so that they would feel like something you might recognize from the world or from the placing of posters or something like that, but that they were ultimately wrong scale so now they were more pure form. Piece number three in the series was actually the first piece to be completed digitally. I'm usually working on four or five pieces at the same time. Something that might not work in one suddenly you can pull out and place in another and it answers a problem in a different piece. And it was in creating this piece in particular that I decided to bring in warps typography which is not something I'd planned to do and it's an element which I used extensively in my early TES work here in the digital art space but there was something missing from the piece and bringing in this warp typography which is broken down to almost pure form allowed me to have this poetic gestural moment but that wasn't achieved by the movement of a pen or a paintbrush or a hand and having these red typographical shapes almost floating away from the central rectangular figure spoke to me of that degrading of language and symbol, the abstracting of language, where something hovers between being pure form and of having symbolic linguistic value. For piece number four, I spent a lot of time playing with the boundaries between ephemerality and weight within the composition. I wanted to make a piece in which the central rectangular figure was almost in the middle of the composition, a very powerful place to be, but push against that by giving both the figure and the ground this white overall colour, combined with very light pinks, creams and yellows. Where they were such a similar colour, to differentiate the figure from the ground, extremely fine line work was added in around the edges of the rectangle to lift it and make it feel more sculptural. There is also intense amount of digital line work here. So this whole piece on first glance seems very simple, but when you look closer is extremely involved and at times chaotic. In contrast to the ephemerality of piece number four, with piece number five I wanted to use an extremely heavy set of monochromatic colours which feel like they could be consuming the central rectangular figure. I was also thinking a lot about Japanese ikebana, the flower arranging in which everything is poised and seems like it could topple at any moment but is held in tension. There's a sense in this piece that everything is ready to collapse or everything is ready to float away. There's a pulling down, a heaviness, a weight, but there's a lightness which allows the ephemerality to continue. So with piece number six, the final piece in the series, I wanted to do something where I would disturb the journey that you've been on so far. So here the clouded mass is at its largest scale, almost consuming the entire space of the image and the central rectangular figure is slipping and falling, leaving its stenciled residue behind and a marker of where it had been and where it may be going next. I also use extremely high contrasting colours to create these pops and shimmers between sections and I left behind much of the digital residue that I would usually remove, like brush glitches or accidentally copied artefacts. 
and also present in this piece is the largest number of fragmented shapes, almost as if the whole thing is blasting apart. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey through the To Lay To Place series. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Odd Jobs, and see you next time.